Religious Scripture Study with me, Karen B., and Just Jack, Flat Earth, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. 
All righty then. <laughs> episode 94, commence. We made uh, it. Down on YouTube, by the way, main channel down on YouTube um, until further notice. I'll just say that. Everything's going to be here for a little while. <laughs> yep, somebody's being a meanie. Meanie mo. All right. I'm going to just do my disclaimer real quick. All right. For some reason, it's bigger than usual. All right, just Jack's disclaimer. To the religious, if you believe it's wrong to study the scripture outside of your religion or denomination, if you believe your religious leaders or church fathers are incapable of having inherited anti-scriptural traditions of men, if you've already made up your mind about scripture, including the scripture shouldn't be studied at all, then the stream is not for you. To others, if you're open-minded to others' opinions, if you haven't made up your mind about scripture, if you've been turned off to religion but believe there's truth in scripture that may have been changed or hidden by religion, if you live according to scripture and like to dig in and discover more, then the stream is for you. We are looking at scripture in the original language using concordances or dictionaries for root words as well as context from a non-religion perspective. We will as well have life experience discussion. We are not here to argue with others about theology or doctrine by the traditions of men, including Catholicism, Christianity, or Judaism. We will be discussing the importance of origins and show how reg religions contradict the scriptures. There you go. All righty. Um, I changed the layout a little bit for folks who are watching at home. Uh, I didn't like when Karen was reading the verse and like half the verse was missing off the screen. So hopefully this will keep an entire verse, <laughs> at least in one entire verse on the screen at a time. So we can, um, if you want to do a review, we can, but we're kind of like, at this point, it's like a, a summarization. We're kind of like hopping all over the place about different um, subjects and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the but, last, one, last one was the longer, longer chapter. Yeah, and, and guess what? So last week, or sorry, last um, episode was 55 uh, verses, right? Mm -hmm. Which, that's long. And then this one is 46 verses, which is also long. <laughs> <laughs> so this week I was I was struggling. I'm like, maybe I'll just do a half a chapter, same as last time. And um, no, I was committed. I was just like, I'm oh, going to awesome. do this today. We're going to get it done. We're going to not only wrap up uh, this chapter, but we're going to wrap up this book of Leviticus. We're going to get into oh, uh, cool. Deuteronomy. So the the last the last chapter, I'll you know next week when we start um, uh, numbers. I will grab a couple of verses out of chapter 27 that I think are um, important nuggets, but most of it has to do with vows of the tabernacle, which we no longer have the tabernacle. So it's not like pertaining to us um, in our, our current um, time, I guess you could say. So I'm going to just continue on into numbers. Now numbers will probably, we will probably be jumping around a lot. Because, uh, as we said at the very, very beginning mm -hmm. of the anti-religious scripture studies, we're not going to spend too much time into genealogies, right? Because sometimes it can get quite tedious. So, what just happened? I tried to change the order of things, and it just messed it up. Uh-oh. Okay, it'll go to the right, but not to the left. That's weird. Anyway, <laughs> so... Um, you know, pretty soon we'll be getting into numbers. And so we may not do full chapter by chapter, but I said that about Leviticus. Yeah. <laughs> we, went through, we went through almost every chapter. Um, yeah. So it's going to be like, you know, I'm going to have to read ahead and be like, okay, do I want, really want to get into this? Like chapter 27, it's just, it's not worth getting into. Uh, people at home, definitely you should study every chapter of the scriptures. So you can get an understanding, mm -hmm. but it's not really um, important for, you know, how we live our regular day to day lives. Um, all right. So I don't know how to get that scroll bar off of there. That's not I don't like that. Oh, well, I guess we'll just carry on. All righty. All right, so chapter 26. Do we want to talk about 25? Uh, uh, you can do it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You can do a quick overview if you want to look back at it. Yeah. 
So it's talking about, it was basically more instruction, right? It's talking about six years, sow your field and let it rest the seventh year. It, get, it talks about the year of Jubilee, uh, which is... It's not, the, which is not in there, right? The, the year of Jubilee is an invention word. Right, right. But it's, So you got the, the seventh year rest and then you got the 50th year rest. Right, yes. okay. Yeah. So it's basically a, a, a cycle, an introduction of right. one of one of many cycles. Um, right. And then, and that's also that's also how I translate the word that's translated as year, because not all, not every time is it talking about a year, but it's actually talking about a repeat, so a cycle, something that happens over and over again, a seven-year cycle, a fifty-year cycle. Uh, there's lots of different cycles like that. And the other thing that's really cool about this chapter is it talks about if you actually do, um, you know, follow Yah, that in your sixth year you'll you'll harvest enough to last you till the ninth year harvest mm -hmm. because the seventh year rests and the eighth year uh the eighth year has to mature the land and then the ninth year would be the next harvest so that that collection of the sixth year harvest will last you through the ninth year mm -hmm. right and that's in verse uh 25 22 and then the redemption of property is you know if you're helping out somebody who is uh, financially in a hard place you can basically rent his land but it's your land until you know the debt is paid or until the time length given for the debt to be paid mm -hmm. and the same thing goes for you know in desperation you could sell yourself uh, and your whole family may move into somebody else's household and you become an indentured servant to them for that period of time. So, as we saw, the translations uh, of the English King James Version can turn simple words into very complicated words because they'll, they'll make it sound like you're kidnapping someone and making them your slave and everything else like that. But if you break down the Hebrew and the root words, you can see that, no, this is something that could happen on a regular basis and there's different ways that you treat your brother your neighbor your sojourner your um your traveler the one that that comes in like cyclically uh and the stranger there's different methods to deal with different sorts of people based on the trust level of how committed they are to um to the people and to yeah and you're not allowed to um charge interest that's a very important thing there also yes and that is a so okay um i'm not going to speak of any specific type of peoples or religious group but <laughs> there's a group of people who specifically charge interest to everyone who's not of their group okay mm -hmm. and they started whole organizations based on this premise and they're called banks okay well we'll leave it at that <laughs> Right. It's it's just a certain group of people. That's all. They wear tiny hats, but that's okay. Anyway. <clears throat> so whenever you want to get into is there anything else from twenty five that you wanted to uh I don't think so. Siphon? Okay. That's it. All yeah. right. All right. Twenty six. Do not make idols for yourselves and do not set up carved image or a pillar or a pillar for yourselves and do not place a stone image in your land to bow down to it. For I am Yehovah, your Elohim. All right. So we've obviously addressed this multiple times mm -hmm. in previous verses. It's a big deal if you put your your spiritual energy and um, your I think it's projection, you know, when they have idols and they have images that they project as their deity they're the ones that are conjuring these things into existence but worshiping something other than the creator or the creator's power within yourself mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and it, i think that it actually you know does give power to that stone object or to that image or whatever else but that's what yah does not want us to do yah wants us to interact with him and be you know co-creators of this realm mm -hmm. so <clears throat> um so let's see there was 
there's the different this says idols and graven images so the first one is the strong leader of nothingness okay that's what idol is strong leader being you know elohim right mm -hmm. deity so deity of nothingness is idol that's what it's literally translated as image is carved or chisel a uh, standing image is a uh, pillar or standing uh image of stone uh image Moskite. Where's Moskite? Uh, it's got to be here somewhere. Oh, Moskite. Okay, so drawing or inquire of is the image of stone. Drawing or inquiring of stone, right? So you're you're drawing or you're getting stuff from the stone statue no you're not you're <laughs> manifesting it and you're blaming it on the stone statue mm -hmm. that's what's happening here okay so moving on and again we mm -hmm. have image uh image image <laughs> three different times it says image when if you actually break down the root word you have a different perspective of what these actual words mean it's not just image 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 there's actual roots to these words that tell you specifically what um, idols we're talking about here. All right. All right. Guard my Sabbaths and reverence my set apart place. I am Yehovah. Okay. The set apart place. Um, it says sanctuary or set apart place. It's Ma Kodesh from the set apart. Okay. If you walk in my laws and guard my commands and shall do them, then I shall give you rain in its season and the land shall yield its crops and the trees of the field yield their fruit. Okay. And your threshing shall last till the time of the grape harvest and the grape harvest shall last. Oh, wait, what verse are you on? 26.5. Oh. Did you read four? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yield, and yield My their bad. fruit shall rain in its season and yield their fruit, right? Sorry, that went by quick. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> and your threshing shall, shall last till the time of the grape harvest, and the grape harvest shall last till the time of the sowing, and you shall eat your bread until you have enough and shall dwell in your land safely. Okay. So it says, um, shall last. What is threshing? Threshing is okay. So you gather a crap ton of wheat stalks, for instance, just mm -hmm. for an example, mm -hmm. and you throw it on this giant floor <clears throat> and you spread it out so that it dries out. And then when you uh, thresh it, you basically um, have mm -hmm. bulls walk through it and it causes the, the seeds and the grain to come off the stem. Rather than sit there and try to pull the seeds off of every stem, you just throw it on a giant floor where it dries out, and as the as they walk through it, the seeds pop off the um off the the stalks. And then the stalks that have no seed at all, they're called chaff, right? So the wheat and the chaff get separated and the chaff gets burned up. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is threshing. It's called a threshing floor. It's where you separate. Mm, okay. Um so the uh oh, where did it say it? Wait, you were you were on verse five, right? Yeah. <laughs> the threshing shall last in the time of the grape harvest and the grape harvest. Okay, so grape harvest is the the gathering, the do gather, and it's translated as vintage in KJV. Until the last sowing, and you shall eat your bread until you have enough. Okay, uh, it will. It will Shabbat. So it says have enough, but it's the same. Um, it's 
it's to be filled, which is also the same root as Sabbath, oath, seven. Mm-hmm. It's the same root. All right. All right. So this is what, when I say um, Shabbat, it's not just the seventh day. It's also an oath and it's also a completion. Like everything is fulfilled. And then when you say shalom, it's a similar one because you're at peace because all is completed. So that's why people say Shabbat Shalom. It's about fulfillment. Like everything is taken care of. You don't have to worry about nothing. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse six. All right. And I shall give peace in the land and you shall lie down and no one make you afraid. And I shall clear the land of evil beasts and not let the sword go through your land. And you shall pursue your enemies, and they shall fall by the sword before you. And five of you shall pursue a hundred, and a hundred of you pursue pursue ten thousand, and your enemies shall fall by the sword before you. Okay, so ten thousand is kind of just a thing that they kind of throw out there. Um, It doesn't actually say, like, a number. It says a... see... Uh, Radaf Revaba. Okay, Radaf Revaba. So Radaf is pursuing, and then Revaba is where you get the abundant increase of quantity or, or authority. So, like when they call someone rabbi, it means my increased authority Mm -hmm. it does not mean teacher okay so this root is that same root but it says you know ten thousand of flight and there's no mention of a specific number it's an increased pursuers okay okay increased pursuers so so here it says a hundred but even an increased like maybe a hundred times a hundred you know so it's like, you know, an increased pursue. So more than 100, like maybe 100 times 100, a.k.a. 10,000, right? All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. And I shall turn to you and make you fruitful and shall increase you and shall establish my covenant with you. Uh, I will rise up. I do my covenant and you. So it's better than establish. It's like, it's it's exalted. It's rose, risen up. Okay. And you shall eat the old supply and clear out the old because of the new. And I shall set my dwelling place in your midst and my being shall not reject you. And I shall walk... Uh, in- hold on, hold huh. on. Um, My being is actually my nefesh life source. This is kind of a, yeah, important thing. Huh. Okay. And I shall walk in your midst and shall be your Elohim and you shall be my people. I am Yehovah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim from being their slaves. And I have broken the bars of your yoke and made you walk upright. Do you know what a yoke is? Yeah. Okay. It's like Some people don't, so yeah. people online like if you have ox Mm -hmm. you put a piece of wood around the neck and that keeps pulling the plow Mm -hmm. and then when you yoke someone or yoke the ox you always put the stronger ox yoked with the weaker ox so that the stronger ox kind of drags the weaker ox along you know kind of controls the weaker ox so it's saying when you were in egypt you know they they connected themselves to you to drag you along. But if you do not obey me and do not do all these commands, and if you reject my laws or if your being loathes my right ruling so that you do not do all my commands but break my covenant, I also do this to you, and I shall appoint sudden alarm over you, wasting disease and inflammation, destroying the eyes and consuming the life, and you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Okay, so a lot to unpack here. Um, 
so this is this is like it is saying you know if you do this but it's more like saying you guys are going to do this and this is how it's going to have a cause and effect uh an action reaction type of thing to if you just reject everything that yah says this is the pattern that follows right mm -hmm. so it says um <clears throat> let's see uh i also so it could just say the anger of mine rather than i also uh the anger of mine i do make this to you and the oversee i do so i i make sure that it happens on over you terror and trouble action to the thinning or wasting away action to the fever or the heat of and the completion of the of the origin and from do slow of the life source so you 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 become weak and slow right mm -hmm. so if you read that over here you don't even get any of that hmm. like okay so thinning is wasting disease over here and consumption over here okay mm -hmm. fever is inflammation or burning og <laughs> mm -hmm. agu and then uh consuming is the destroying of the eyes or consuming of the eyes it's it's the it's the completion of the origin like going back to like you have nothing and then cause sorrow of the heart or consuming of the life is the slowing of the life source the the soul the nefesh so that's the slowing of the life source is different than the consuming of the life or the the sorrow of the heart right mm -hmm. and there is a word for sorrow and there is a word for heart so i don't know why they're using um or consuming of life i don't see how it's consuming or life you know nefesh um you know where it said being up here uh to, 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 to. your being mm -hmm. that's nefesh mm -hmm. but here they say the life but it's it's actually the you know subconscious life source right okay all right all right and I shall set my face against you, and you shall be smitten before your enemies, and those who hate you shall rule over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. Yeah. That's kind of a strange line at the last part. You shall flee when no one pursues you. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. And after... Uh, there was a very dark, you know, time in my life where I felt, you know, everybody's out to get me. You know, it's... Yeah. You you flee when no one's after you. Yeah. And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I shall punish you seven times more for your sins. Like if, if it's not enough that your life is turning to crap and you can't turn back to the way that, you know, Yah instructs, then it's just going to get worse. Mm -hmm. And I shall break the pride of your power and shall make your heavens like iron and your earth like bronze. Okay. So your unseen existence right now i've had people say that i'm wrong to uh translate heavens as just the root shem for heaven okay mm -hmm. the root being unseen existence right so this is a perfect example of where it does not say shemaim okay mm -hmm. um let me change it to regular HSBR because it doesn't show the Hebrew when it's in the parallel version. So this is heaven right here. Does this say, and I'm highlighting it, of course, does this say, oh, let me zoom in. Okay. Does this say Shemaim? Mm, no. It says Shemechem. Mm -hmm. Okay which is Shem, and then the Yod makes of, and then the Chem makes yours, okay? So this could, you could actually say, 
of your name. Hmm. Right. If you didn't have the context, because we're here, we're talking about heaven and earth, right? This is the Shem and the Aretz. Okay. Here we have Aretz. So, you know, by the context that this is talking about, quote unquote, heaven, but it doesn't even say Shemaim. It just says Shem. So this proves what I was saying, that Shemaim is not based on, um, I'm not going to get into what other people say Shemaim means, but they're rejecting my point because it's like, it's not Shem, it's Shemaim. But here it is, a literal example of where heaven is only written as Shin Mem, Shem. Just to justify my crazy translation. Okay. <laughs> So, right here, Shem. And that means heaven. All right. So, back to parallel. Here we go. And, yep. So, it makes your heavens, your unseen existence, right? Like iron. And your arets, like bronze. All right. Mm -hmm. So, that means if you have an iron sky... That means you're not getting rain. That's what it's about. You're going to lose rain. And then your ground is not going to produce. That's what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. All right. And your strength shall be spent in vain and your land not yield its crops, nor the trees of the land yield their fruit. Yeah, I don't know why vain is in there. At all. Um. Greek empty drawn out okay so it's empty emptiness nothingness right so that's what it means for nothing yeah <laughs> I, I just don't know why they use the word vain there but yeah whatever mm. And if you walk contrary to me and refuse to obey me, I shall bring on you seven times more plagues according to your sins. And plagues. Hold on one second. Okay. It's from palm crushing. I don't know that why that would be plague. You're several more crushings. It's not plague. Mm. Like it's it's an it's an infliction, right? It's like getting smacked or punched or knocked down or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's not a it doesn't say plague. Plague, you would think you know disease or something like that, but it doesn't say that. Yeah. Actually, so far, nothing really in scripture has backed up there being contagious diseases. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, yeah. But like Side I said, note. the scriptures <laughs> version really, the scriptures version really focused on, you know, a few key words that they translated differently. Mm -hmm. A lot of it, they just copied what was in the King James Version just because they didn't take the time to break down every single word like, like we're doing here. So, right. So I can't blame them too much. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And send wild beasts among you, which shall be review of your children. And I shall cut off your livestock and make you few in number and your highways shall be deserted. So wild beasts is field life. <laughs> It's, okay. it says right here yeah um field livers people <laughs> beings that live in the field mm. wild beasts okay <laughs> <laughs> if if you want to extrapolate that like all right whatever mm -hmm. all right and if you are not instructed by me by these but walk contrary to me then I also shall walk contrary to you, and I myself shall strike you seven times for your sins. Now this is, uh, 
Let's see. Palm Crush. And then Yet is Gather or Also. Okay. So this would be a bad idea if the creator is walking against you. <laughs> yeah. The opposite way of you. That's not that's not a good thing. And again, in my dark time, I've experienced that. It's not good. It's I wouldn't wish, wish it on my worst enemy to be contrary to the creator. Even um oh my gosh. I want to be careful how I say this. Even people who don't follow scripture don't have to experience the creator walking contrary to them. It's those who dedicate themselves to actually trying to connect to the creator and go against him that the creator walks against you. You can't experience that if you just completely deny the creator. It's like, okay, if that's if that's your plane of existence, you get what you get, you know? But this is like, if you, like, this is rebellion. This is not just like ignorance. This is somebody that's supposed to be connecting with Yah that is going against him knowing what they should do and doing the opposite. And later um, in numbers, we'll, we'll get to it, but this is the only unforgivable sin to know what you should do and do the opposite. All right. And I shall bring against you a sword executing the vengeance of my covenant and you shall gather together in your cities and I shall send pestilence among you and you shall be given into the land of into the hand of the enemy. Okay, here we go again with pestilence. It's uh, <laughs> these trigger words. Anyway, um, but this is what exactly what I was talking about. It's the vengeance of his covenant. It's a contract that you've already made with the creator. Like we're gonna be with you. And then if you go against it, it's not good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and continue to gather you in the cities and I shall send a word against you in the middle of you. Okay. So a new order in the middle of you pestilence, um, uh, a reordering of the population. Okay. That's their explanation of it. Okay. But see, look at the definition. A thing, a word, an act, a chronicle, a saying, a commandment, pestilence, plague. Mm -hmm. All translated from the same word. How is a thing or a matter a pestilence or a plague? I don't know. It's just a reordering. Yeah, yeah. a reordering of a population. Interesting. Yes. I like that. I like this definition better. Huh. Yeah. It's not a plague. It's just um, some of you are going to pass away and some of you are not. Interesting. It actually talks about this. It's like your population is going to go down and then you're going to be because you want to worship the deities of your enemies. You're going to be taken into the captivity of your enemies. Oh, uh, sounds and familiar. Then when, <laughs> and then and then when you're suffering and it, and it gets too bad and you finally turn back, I'll bring you back. Right. It's like, why pestilence? It's like, oh, sorry. These words trigger me. It's like, yeah. why would you put that when it's not there? All right. Go ahead. All right. Um, when I have cut off your supply of bread, 10 women shall bake your bread in one oven and they shall bring back to you your bread by weight and you shall eat and not be satisfied. All right. So the supply of bread is the, the tribe of bread. Um, I just, I, I find that interesting that it's, um, supply hmm. the branching or the tribe of your bread. All right. So. They shall bring back to you your bread by weight, and you shall eat it and not be satisfied. Like, no matter how much you get, you're going to be like, this ain't right. I'm not in the right place. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever had that where it's like everything seems to be going right, but something is not quite right. Like, I feel out of place or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've worked at employment like that. Like, they were substantially taking care of me financially, but I was like, I need to leave. I, I just don't like it here, you know? Yeah. Um, and if in spite of this, you do not obey me, but walk contrary to me, then I shall walk contrary to you in wrath. And I myself shall punish you seven times more, seven times for your sins. Okay. So wrath is, oh my gosh, wrath is correction. Okay. 
So the word repent means to turn back or to turn away. This is the word of, um, no, this is, shall walk contrary to, oh, punish. Is it punish? Let's see, chastise. See, punish is sar. Sar is like um you ever heard of a tsar from Russia? Yeah. It comes from this word, like it's it's prince or ruler. Mm -hmm. Um, but <clears throat> when it's yasar, it's bring correction. So it says punish, but it's actually bring correction. Okay. I shall walk contrary to you in my wrath, and I shall bring correction to you seven times for your sins. And it's not wrath, it's it's in in anger right here. Hmm. I'm going to be mad at you, and I'll keep bringing correction to you. <laughs> okay, that makes a lot more sense than in my wrath I shall punish you seven times. <laughs> like, yeah. All right. Okay. And you shall eat the flesh of your sons and eat the flesh of your daughters. Yikes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's. Yeah. And there's actually things of this in the past where um, uh, people were like cities were under. Uh, what's it called? Siege. They were under siege and the food ran out. And the children would die, and then the parents would eat the children because there's nothing, there's no food. So it, yeah, sick and scary, and yeah. and, and I that's, that's history about that. Like that's that's a thing. It happens. Dude, that's so. so horrible. Yeah, it's yeah horrible. And, and I shall destroy your high places and cut down your sun pillars and put your carcasses on the carcasses of your idols, and my being shall loathe you. All right, because we're they're putting all their effort into you know statues and carvings and images and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the sun idol, which is rooted in the it, it's a, it's a name that means the collection of heat. Okay, and here it just says images. <laughs> huh. This is KJV. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember where I said it's like images, 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 images? Yeah. They're very much, see, look, the root of his heat, okay? Mm -hmm. They're very much staying away from pointing out that the sun god worship is bad. Why would they do that? Yeah. Because the, the, the religion of Catholicism and then by extension Christianity is based on sun god worship. Mm -hmm. So they don't want you going here. So like, let's go, let's go to Strong's Concordance. A sun pillar. Let's go to Brown Driver Briggs. Incense altar, sun pillar, idol image. Mm -hmm. They don't want you talking about, you know, not worshiping the sun, like, you know, having a heliocentric model. Right. You know, stuff like that. Right. Um, they don't want you paying attention to worshiping the sun is bad. <laughs> right. All right. Verse 31. And I shall turn your cities into ruins and lay your set apart places waste and not smell your free, your sweet fragrances. All right. And I shall lay the land waste and your enemies who dwell in it shall be astonished at it. Yeah. And I shall scatter you among the nations and draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desert and your cities ruins. Okay, so he, he warned about this multiple chapters before, about this is what would happen, is if you go against me, then the land will rest without you. Mm -hmm. You're not going to keep defiling this land. You're going to get kicked out one way or another by mm -hmm. war or by uh, siege or whatever. Right. All right. And the land enjoy its Sabbaths as long as it lies waste and you are in your enemy's land, then the land would rest and enjoy its Sabbaths. Okay, so there's an interesting thing here um, that it gets spoken of in the, the prophet books where it says, okay, you guys were bad for uh, uh, 
seven years or wait, how did it go? Anyways, however long you were bad in the land is however long you were going to be taken into captivity. I think it's one seventh of the time that the land was bad, the, that the rain had land had to rest. In other words, uh, every Sabbath year gets accumulated. All right. So you were evil for, uh, 49 years. So then the land has to rest for seven, that type of deal. Seven times seven is 49, right? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> like doing the right. math right. <laughs> right. All right. That would be really bad if it like, uh, where'd you do your math? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. All right. As long as it lies waste, it rests for the time it did not rest on your Sabbaths when you dwelt in it. Okay. Well, there's the verse that explains it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And for those of you who are left, I shall send faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies and the sound of a shaken leaf shall cause them to flee, and they shall flee as though retreating from a sword, and they shall fall when no one pursues. And that's those who are left. Right? Yeah. And then they'll go into the land of their enemies. Okay? And this is all prophetic because this happens later on in uh, the Chronicles and Kings and all that stuff, history, mm. his, history books, which I don't consider history. I mean, I don't consider scripture. I consider history. Right. Yeah. And they shall stumble over one another as from before a sword when no one pursues and you shall be unable to stand before your enemies. And you- um one another is okay the and topple him the human brother of him so it says upon one another but it's actually uh over your brother so you're basically going to you know throw your brother under the bus okay and you shall perish among the nations and the land of your enemies shall eat you up And those of you who are left, rot away in their crookedness in your enemies' lands, and also in their father's crookedness, rot away with them. Okay. But if they confess their crookedness and the crookedness of their fathers with their trespass in which they trespass against me, and that they also have walked contrary to me, and that I also have walked contrary to them and have brought them into the land of their enemies... If their uncircumcised heart is then humbled and they accept the punishment of their crookedness, then I shall remember. Uncircumcised heart means the the circumcision is a dedication, right? You dedicate your son to Yah. If you have an uncircumcised heart, that means that you become undedicated. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do open heart surgery or nothing like that. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Just just FYI. (laughs) Yeah. 42, sorry. Then I shall remember my covenant with Yaakov and also my covenant with Yitzhak and also remember my covenant with Abraham and remember the land. Okay, so repentance is always there, right? Mm -hmm. Now, think about this for a second because there's people who have this philosophy that there's no forgiveness in the Old Testament, okay? Mm -hmm. And then they say, and the only way that you could have forgiveness is if you sacrifice animals, blah, 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 right? Mm Mm-hmm. Now, they're in a foreign land, okay? They're in captivity, and they realize they screwed up, so they apologize. And then Yah remembers his covenant with Yaakov and Yitzhak and Avram, so then he brings them back to the land. Is there any mention of after you do a bunch of sacrifices, after you, you know, uh, do a new circumcision, uh, after you pay so much uh, silver or gold? any of that Mm-mm. no he forgives you and you come back if you're truly repentant right mm-hmm. turning back all right all right for the land was abandoned by them and enjoying its sabbaths while living waste without them and they lying were waste. lying waste okay, lying waste without them and they were paying for their crookedness because they rejected my right rulings and because their being loathed my laws yeah so i think it is just Forgive me, people, if I'm misquoting, 
but I'm pretty sure they were in captivity for 70 years because they were wicked for 490. I think that's how it went. Mm. And yet for all this, when they are in the land of their enemies, I shall not reject them, nor shall I loathe them, so as to destroy them and break my covenant with them, for I am Jehovah, their Elohim. All right, so there's also people who say that he, um, the creator is like uh, prejudice and, um, uh, you know, like you need to wipe out these people because they're like uber bad, right? Even though he says, like, earlier to Abraham, like, you're not going to wipe them out yet because they haven't gotten bad enough, right? Mm -hmm. But if they get, like, uber bad, you're going to wipe them out. And then there are people who are like this evil Old Testament God. He wipes out whole populations. And and his people, he blesses. And he protects them from anything bad happening to them. No. Actually, all that same bad stuff is going to happen to them if they're rejecting him. If they're going contrary to him and going the opposite of what he told them to do. They're being wiped out population-wise. They're being taken into captivity. They're, you know, he doesn't favor even his people. But when they finally humble themselves and return back to the creator, then he blesses them, right? Mm -hmm. So he doesn't, you know, even though there's groups of people who think they're the special people, you know, that even though something bad happens to them, you know, God's not going to let anything bad happen to them. No, if you're against the creator, you're against the creator, period. Mm -hmm. Then I shall remember for their sake the covenant of the ancestors whom I brought out of the land of Mitzrayim before the eyes of the nations to be their Elohim. I am Yehovah. It's not actually ancestors, but it's the heads, the tops, the first, the covenant of, of the first. Mm hmm. These are the laws and the right rulings and the Torah, which Yehovah made between himself and the children of Israel on Mount Sinai by the hand of Moshe. And that's Torah, and then Ot makes it plural. Torot. Torot, okay. Yep. So there we go. Um, and I mean, that even seems like, you know, that's a good uh, ending of a summarization, you know. And these are the laws, and these are the right rulings, and these are the Torah which Jehovah made between himself and the children of Israel on Mount Sinai by the hand of Moshe. Mm -hmm. In other words, the end, right, <laughs> of this book. Um, so that's a good way to end it. And then, like I said, next week, I'll hit a couple of verses in here. Um, but, yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that. So I'll jump over into chat. Oh, ba by the way, um, Alex Critical Inception is now here. Oh, so cool. shout out to my... So, shout out to my homie that's about 20 feet away from me right now. Right on. <laughs> All right. Shout out to Zachary Zabala, uh, Gregory May, Spicy Sarah, Zulu One, Wes F.E., Jameson Kimbrell. Uh, let's see. Unveiling this realm. Who's unveiling this realm? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> on Dr. Uh, undoctrinated Ryan Aiden. <laughs> I know it's an undoctrinated with Ryan in the middle, but anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Captain Construction, Nathan Reed, Joseph Osborne. Did I say Captain Construction yet? Either way, mm -hmm. Captain Construction, mm -hmm. Lord Racer, Cami, Aisling 717, Rose. What's up, Rose? Hey, Rose. Alex Javier, Bill Wool. Uh, let's see. Boston Ray, Daryl Davis. Gregory May. All right. I think I hit everybody. Now I'm going to search through here. Uh, thank you for going over to put a study together. That's why I said that was about it. Okay. So Captain says, uh, thank you and I for continuing this, uh, regardless of the setbacks and difficulties. Yeah. yeah we appreciate your appreciation. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for being here, y'all. Finding us on my little rarely used backup channel. Yeah, for the uh, North Kakalaki crew and uh, those folks enjoying themselves out there today, have a good time. Sorry, couldn't be there with you, but hopefully someday we'll have it on a on a Sunday where I'm not busy helping somebody move. <laughs> <laughs> When he scattered Israel, he put a little seed in each nation. 
I believe that uh, we awoken are what grew from that seed, and now we are being awoken as a uh, pokey injection thingy against the infection of the dissections. Okay, yeah. So, um, Bill is saying, like, we could be the residual leftover of the um, the Israel being scattered to the nations. Yeah. Uh, am I late? I I don't know. Carolyn is here, but she's uh, sleeping next to me. She's enjoying Shabbat. Uh, <laughs> everyone is either focused listening or they're not chatting or AFK. Yeah. I mean, I went through a lot of heavy stuff today, so yeah. I can see how it would be distracting. Plus, we have less viewers than normal. I mean, we're getting about 40. It's not yeah, we're yeah. getting about 40 people on Karen B in here. We've got like 15, 16. So, well, 20, about half that. Okay, so it's pronounced wheel, like the wheel of a car. Bill wheel, Bill wheel. Uh, Try okay. to remember that. All right, good to see y'all. Have a restful Shabbat. I'm going to go hang out with my homeboy, Critical Inception. Woo-woo. Yeah, right hey, There he is. <laughs> he just jumped in chat. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. All right, have a restful day, y'all. Right. And uh, we'll see you next time. And we'll be jumping into numbers. We'll do a little introduction and a little closing on Leviticus. So Okay, yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us once again for Anti-Religious Scripture Study. And we'll see you next Saturday. And the earth is still flat. And the earth is still flat. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>